Building a tiny home to be both beautiful and functional can be a real challenge. Thankfully, here on Waiheke Island, we're about to meet one young couple who were absolutely up to the task and who have created a spectacular sanctuary for themselves here on this bush property. G'day Willem. Hey Bryce. Great nice. to meet you mate. Yeah, same here. <laughs> Hi Kate, lovely hey, to meet you. You too, yeah. This <laughs> is such a beautiful home that you have here. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks Bryce, yeah, we're really privileged to be here. Now, how did you actually come to be living in a tiny house? Uh, we just wanted to get out of the rent trap basically. We were paying a lot in renting and found that we couldn't afford a normal house. So uh, this was an option that we came across reading a magazine and we just thought, you know, it's such a great solution to have the chance to buy more land and have a small house to begin with and then just work your way up from there and not be instantly stuck in a lot of debt. I used to work for a magazine called Green Ideas. I'm a graphic designer and um, we did a feature on tiny houses and I remember just thinking, oh, this is just perfect to solving a housing crisis. So I took the article home to Willem and I showed you and you were like, yeah, oh. that's I think at first I was a little <laughs> bit frightened. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tiny houses wasn't out there back then. No, um, that was about three years ago. Yeah, exactly. And it was all about, you know, following the Joneses with, you know, having this large house. So Kate actually took me out to go see one and yeah. um, oh, I loved it. And um, from my point, it was really nice to work on a project coming from the architectural field that mm -hmm. um, I can get hands on or doing a design and actually see how it develops to the final product, which we couldn't be any more happier. Can you tell me about this house? How big is it? 7.6 meters long by 2.4, 2.5 wide. And um, height is about 4.3 meters. And the home is here in this really wonderful bush setting. Can yeah. you talk to me about your section here and how you came um. to be on it? We fell in love with it. It was actually the first section we saw. <laughs> it was a little bit more money than what we thought we would spend, but we could yeah. have mentioned the house here. We talked to the neighbour, asked him if it was okay to bring it through his driveway. Yeah, and then we just got really excited and purchased yeah. the land. And yeah, we still well, pinch ourselves that we're here, really, because it's, <laughs> you know, it's so cool to own something that's ours. and. Yeah, we just still can't believe it. <laughs> I'm so impressed with the location and I love all of the landscaping work that you've done as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's been working very hard. Yeah, no, we're very happy. It does play a big part of, you know, your house, that feeling of mm. your surrounding. So Making very happy. Making it a home. Yeah. yeah. Especially in a tiny house as well, because a tiny house does encourage us to get out into the world a little bit more. So having yeah. all this around the home is really great. Yeah, yeah, a big deck opens up your living space and extends it double. So it's been really awesome. We decided to put an outdoor bath in as well. So yeah. one thing we wanted in the house that we couldn't fit. So if you can't fit it inside, put it outside. Yeah, <laughs> well, especially in this mm. lovely bush setting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's really nice, especially when you sit in it at night and you know the sun goes down the west and the sun actually settles down from that side. So you get a bit of sun coming over and then once it's down, it's just so nice seeing some of the reflection off the trees. So yeah. we love it. <laughs> well, this is all very beautiful, but can we go inside and take a look at the house? Oh, definitely. Come in. Yeah, all come right. In. Oh, now this is beautiful. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, bro. Can you tell me a little bit about the style of the design and all of the wonderful interior work that you've done? Uh, well, Willem was really into modern houses, so he designed the exterior of the house, and then I really like small cottages. It was white and, <laughs> white and wood, and so with us together we kind of merged into this and it just really worked really well especially the cedar on the ceiling it reminds us of an upturned boat house you know with the white as well it just gives a bit of contrast between the inside and outside so it sort of like reflects more what's happening on the outside and it just makes the space feel bigger you know yeah like they say less reflecting and colors it brings you in yeah so having the white and just features of the timber worked out really good and can you tell me about the layout in the tiny house? We wanted to break it up in a few modules. So you still got the kitchen and the kitchen area. You've got your lounge feeling as a zone. And then we wanted a little computer room, which eventually got turned into a nursery. 
I think that was quite important. Otherwise, it just felt like one big space and you've got multiple rooms in that. So mm. for us, it was just feeling that you still have those zones. And so when are you expecting the new addition to the family? Well, he's about seven weeks away. We know it's a boy and he's tracking to be quite a big one. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, we can't wait to be parents and it doesn't phase us at all being in a tiny house. Yeah. It's quite exciting. How great that you built that versatility into the house though, so yeah. that you could actually transform a room and create a nursery. Yeah, well we didn't know how long we'd be in a tiny house for, so building a room that you could convert from one thing into another made sense. Well, can we check out the nursery and see how you've done it? Yeah, sure. Oh, this is <laughs> such a sweet room. Yeah. <laughs> and absolutely perfect size for a nursery as well yeah we found the perfect size cot that can convert later when he's older into a toddler bed um, which was perfect because this room is actually a tiny bit smaller than a, your normal size cot but yeah we found the perfect one and it's been so fun decorating it <laughs> i bet yeah a wonderful tiny room for a tiny human yeah and we've been working on a capsule wardrobe. What is a capsule wardrobe? Because I've never heard of that before. Oh really? Um, yeah. So if you are living minimalistic and want to save space, a uh, capsule wardrobe is like you'd choose maybe 10 outfits that all go together, shoes, handbag, whatever. And so whatever you pick out will go with the next thing you pick out. So your pants will go with your shirt and so on so on. <laughs> nice way of doing it. I like it, <laughs> training the little one to be efficient right from the start. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's got such a small wardrobe. <laughs> Way to go. Yeah. And then what do we have above us here? Uh, that's our little reading loft, but we've also just store some things up there, like special things that you can't get rid of, and yeah, we just keep a box of that up there as well. You know, even though the space is so small, it's nice to just sit down and, you know, look through the window. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you know, one day maybe the little one will love that. It's a little bit of space where he can uh, just do his thing. So. Yeah. Yeah, throw some toys up there and let him play. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. <laughs> the lounge here just looks so comfortable. It's a decent sized sofa, isn't it? Yeah, it's nice to come back home and you know you're going to be on something comfortable. At the same time, we use it to store my clothes. So Kate's got the drawers and I've got under the sofa. And then at the same time, we sort of thought that we could design the steps that you sort of lead off the couch area and add the extra pillow, which just gives you that extended leg space. We find sometimes we could lie down there quite easily. And, yeah. yeah, so you can actually lie fully down on that longer piece there. And so I think um, in a couple of weeks when I can't get in the loft, I'll be down here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and can you tell me about this lovely looking kitchen you've built? Yeah, we really wanted a bigger kitchen. It's hard to fit everything in a tiny house, but we love cooking and entertaining. So a bigger kitchen was, uh, on our wish list. We find it works so well, like everything's within such a short, you know, reach of everything else. And we've actually lived with a smaller kitchen before in other flats that yeah. we've had, so this feels a bit luxury. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you've got a ton of storage in the kitchen as well. Yeah, and a full size oven and microwave, pull out pantry. And having the double sink helped mm. quite a bit. Obviously, my job being to clean the dishes, so <laughs> <laughs> that was the first thing I did say if we can have a double sink because we yeah. wouldn't have the space for a dishwasher, and it's uh, quite nice standing out here cleaning and looking out there. So mm. happy to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's not a bad job, eh? No. I mean, it can become a baby bath. <laughs> yeah. And it's great that you've managed to build all of this in behind your stairs as well into the loft. Yeah. Yes, a standard fridge was always an item that we really wanted. We just thought that having the fridge there as the stairs are moving up, that we could put it underneath the stairs. And it gave us the final step, a bit of a platform to stand before you step into the bedroom. And is that the bathroom behind you there? Yes, that's correct. Basically, we thought we'll keep that at the end of the house. It just sort of made sense with all the plumbing moving from that point. And uh, we managed to get a nice size toilet as well as a nice size shower. And then one of the items was as well the pocket door, which um, we just thought would be the smarter way rather than actual folding door. And then that also visually gave us that look through the window through to the outside. Mm. Definitely adds a really nice sense of space to the room, doesn't it? Mm. Yes, definitely. Again, it's just one of those design rules bringing the outside in. And then what are you doing for power and services and everything here? So basically with the power, we ended up connecting to council from the road. We brought the power line all the way down to the tiny. That at the same time allowed us for if any future development further on the site, 
we can just connect off that. And then I see you've got a really big rainwater tank outside, so you're obviously collecting all of your water off the roof? We catch quite a bit of water. Obviously being a tiny house with a small roof, there's a few times that we had to top it up a bit, so they recommended just doing a bigger tank at the moment. Mm -hmm. And what do you do for laundry here? So in the beginning, we basically used to go to the island and have our laundry washed for us, <laughs> which was really nice. But once we got the deck up, we always knew that we were going to build a little box on the outside of the house. And that worked out pretty perfect because we had some cedar left from the cladding and we had our builder create us a beautiful box mm -hmm. and the washing machine slash dryer is just sitting out there. Yeah, it works really well. It's waterproof and it doesn't fit well in the kitchen. You'd lose a lot of storage space. So again, what you can't fit inside, put outside. Makes perfect sense. <laughs> and then it's your sleeping loft upstairs, is it? Uh, yeah, coming up. Thank you very much. There's something as well that I find really comforting about going into a gable roof sleeping loft. It really is just such a cozy space, isn't it? Yeah, the coziness. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And having the roof light has been really awesome because we could be lying here looking out at the stars quite a bit. It was a bit of a fight of who got the roof window side. Who gets the roof window side, yeah. <laughs> who won? <laughs> well, <I'm laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice job. Oh. <laughs> so how long have you been living in the tiny now? Uh, it'll be coming up a year in February. So yeah, 11 months now. How are you finding life in the tiny house? Really good. It's yeah. been better than we've thought, eh? Yeah, no, definitely. It's got a lot of benefits and, mm. you know, it just makes sense, really. We found that there's times when we can get on top of each other maybe a little bit too much. Yeah, we thought, you know, there's always a risk that living so close in proximity to each other, you could have problems, but it's actually been really good for us. Yeah, mm. we just got to sort of read each other in a way and, you know, know when time to give a bit of space. Yeah. So. And you just go out and do land. <laughs> yeah, I'll normally just head back into the garden, so <laughs> that gives us a little bit of freedom. <laughs> yeah. And can you talk to me about the cost of building the tiny house? So the total cost came roughly around 90k. We were really settled with um, the cedar, so mm -hmm. that adds a little bit of cost. We also searched online a lot for products before we started the build, so that helped save money and we upcycled a few things here and there to save money again and then we were lucky enough working with Brenton as our builder because he actually prefers working with clients who want to get involved and that helped save cost on labour as well so yeah we did as much as we could hey. Yeah but obviously to a certain extent we, we still needed the builder to do his building stuff. To build something to the standard with new appliances and you know, the quality of everything, you know, it's not like having to buy an old rundown house that you have to pile lots and lots of money into, you know. We were able to spend more money on the land and have the house and it's ours and yeah. you know, we just pinch ourselves constantly. We're so lucky. <laughs> and again, it doesn't take a massive hit on the mortgage yeah. as well. And yeah. yeah, what it really represents is the freedom we have we've mm. got our own space you know we've got our own piece of security if, if that's the right way to say it mm. um, just opens us up to be able to do a lot more in our life than we would have if we'd gone down a more traditional housing route I really love what you have done with this house. The home itself is really beautiful and homey and it is incredible the way that you've landscaped everything around it and really nestled it into this gorgeous bush property. Thank you so much for sharing your home Thank with you, me. Thank you Bryce. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thanks so much. Willem and Kate have done such a brilliant job with this home. You can tell that their combined backgrounds in architecture and design have perfectly come together to create a space that really works. With the new baby now on the way, there is no doubt in my mind that this is going to be a wonderful first home for this young family.